what about, what about this, uh, uh, what you told me before about the, the ranging? Uh, are you, do you still have any, some doubts about that or uh, is everything resolved now? Uh, we're getting good ranging data now, Yuri. Сейчас мы получаем хорошие данные по измерению дальности. Super time. Houston flight, Zug Moskva. Корабль Союз готов к стыковке. Sure, the flight director and the other people here in the control center are happy to know that. Uh, I'd like you to know that uh, Apollo is go for dock also. Спасибо, Юрий Степанович, очень рада это слышать. Я уверен, что все остальные наши управленцы и руководитель полета будут тоже очень рады это слышать. Что касается Аполлона, мы Аполлон тоже готов к стыковке. And if you'll excuse me just for a minute, I'll pass that word on now. Меня сейчас извините, я передам ваше разрешение на стыковку. Roger. Apollo Houston, I got two messages for you. Moscow is go for docking. Houston is go for docking. It's up to you guys. Have fun. All righty. Sounds good. Palomino Mila, Alexei. Mid-July, 1975. An American Apollo spacecraft and a Soviet Soyuz spacecraft prepare to join in Earth orbit, 140 miles above the Atlantic near Portugal. During their two-day joint flight, Astronauts and cosmonauts transferred between spacecraft. They conducted space experiments, and they tested a compatible rendezvous and docking system, evaluating its potential as the universal standard on future spacecraft for docking and rescue. The mission climaxed more than three years of planning and preparation, a time during which differences in language, in technology, in political creed were set aside in favor of the common goal. This was the mission that opened the door to international manned spaceflight, the mission that set the course for joint flights of the future. This was the mission of Apollo Soyuz. In the pre-dawn calm of July 15th, the methodical countdown of Apollo moved with customary precision toward a mid-afternoon launch. Of lesser note was the fact that this would be the last flight of Apollo Saturn. And as the countdown narrowed, chances are that more than one member of the launch team reflected on other proud days of Apollo, like its nine flights to the moon six of which resulted in landing men there. It's three flights to Skylab, transporting crews to the orbiting space station. And now, in nine days, the entire Apollo program would pass into history. Apollo would make way for a two-way reusable vehicle, the space shuttle, scheduled for its orbital flight debut in 1979. But today, it is Apollo Soyuz, and as dawn approaches the Florida coast, a similar drama is nearing climax, half a world away. The scene, Baikonur Launch Complex in Kazakhstan, Central USSR. The Soyuz spacecraft, its crew approaching the end of pre-launch checks, is about to signal the start of this historic mission. At Mission Control Moscow, flight controllers monitor Soyuz as it gathers momentum en route to orbital altitude. Less than nine minutes after launch, Soyuz, powered by triple booster stages, is inserted into its assigned orbit. This is Apollo Saturn launch control. The countdown has proceeded smoothly uh, this morning, and the uh, flight crew here at the Kennedy Space Center were alerted about 10.30. 
there right now in the suit room at the Manned Spacecraft Operations Building, uh, donning their spacesuits, and they're scheduled to leave the suit room about 1237 for the trip out to Pad B. The weatherman continues to be cooperative. A near-perfect day for the launch, made to order for the thousands lining the roadsides and beaches to witness this Apollo-Saturn finale. seconds in the countdown. We'll hold down till thrust builds up. 11. Engine 10, ready light on. 9, 10, 9, 8, 8, 8 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 3 2, 2, engine one, sequence start. Zero. 1, 0, launch commit. We have a liftoff. All engines building up thrust. Moving out. Clear the tower. Uh, roger, power clear. Roger, Tom, you got good thrust on all engines. You're right on the money. 30 seconds, we're on the way. Stand by for mode 1 Bravo. Mark, 1 Bravo. 1 Bravo, 2 Gs. Roger. And cabin pressure's coming down. Roger. Hello, Houston, you're go for station. Uh, Roger, go for station. Mark. Okay, and that light is out on the 4B. We got acceleration. Roger. Apollo is placed in orbit. Five, six, eight, nine. Go. Now, we'll uh, auto. And before the flight is three hours okay, old, the docking the module is smoothly, smoothly extracted from the second stage booster, left trailing behind. During the next 40 hours, Apollo, through a series of maneuvers, will slowly close the orbital gap with Soyuz. The two crews will meet again, not as members of this or that nationality, but as friends who for three years shared their separate cultures and customs, and a part of themselves. In preparing for their mission, Soviet and American crews spent a good deal of time together. In formal mission training, in learning about the other man's culture, in getting to know the man himself. In uh, the United States, I want to visit Hollywood. <laughs> Alexei Leono, Soyuz commander. Because I want to be a movie star. Colonel in the Soviet Air Force. No, I don't want. <laughs> Tom Stafford want. <laughs> in 1965, on the flight of Voskhod II, he became the first man to walk in space. Right now, we're, we're, we're optimistic we'll meet the launch schedule. The hardware's in good shape, as far as astronaut and cosmonaut training are in good shape. When you put the whole thing together... The that's Apollo commander, Air Force General Thomas Stafford. Before this mission, he had flown three times in space. He was commander of Apollo 10, the mission that orbited the moon and qualified the lunar module for subsequent lunar landings. A civilian and a veteran of the U.S. space program, Donald K. Deke Slayton. One of the original seven astronauts, he was scheduled to pilot the fourth manned Mercury flight. 